All right, guys, so in this video, uh, we're gonna talk about the confidence interval. Uh, that's kind of an important piece. It's, it's in these questions. It's something you really have to kind of understand. Uh, so these are two questions that were sent in by a viewer, and they really kind of drive home that point as well. So hope you like the video. All right, guys, so another long question. So let's read the, the bottom here. It says, which, uh, let's see if you, which of the, of the following is the most appropriate conclusion about the effects of guided meditation after delivery of after delivery on the risk of postpartum depression. All right, so they're asking some there's some data in this question that we got to look for. Now, it says researchers conducted a randomized trial to determine whether guided meditation prior to childbirth had an effect on the incidence of postpartum depression. Study participants are women with no mental health history who gave birth after 35 weeks gestation. Women were randomly assigned to either daily guided meditation in the weeks leading to childbirth or placebo, defined by listening to classical music. The, ri the relative risk of postpartum depression among women receiving the guided meditation is 0 .70, 95% confidence interval of 0.6 to 0 0.92, okay? And then, okay, and with which of the following is the most appropriate conclusion about the effects of guided meditation after delivery on the risk of postpartum depression. So really this whole question is based on, do you understand this sentence and what it means, okay? The relative risk of postpartum depression among women receiving guided meditation is 0.7, okay? So po they're trying to make some association between, post between postpartum depression and people who did, to, who did uh, this guided meditation. So the, it came out, the relative risk came out at 0.7. Now just think about this. If the relative risk came out at exactly one, okay, 1, okay, 1.0, what does that mean? That means that the risk, there is no difference, that the risk was the same whether you did, whether you did the meditation or not, okay? So that means it would just be equal. So if the risk went from one to down to 0 0.70, does that mean there's a, a less likely risk or a more risk? We could do guided meditation. You know, forget about what the thing, about what, what they did. What does the number mean, okay? Because that's really what the understanding is, because they can trip you up on the, on the words. If you go from, from 1.0, meaning it's equal, to 0.7 risk, the risk went down, okay? The risk went down. By how much? It went from basically, let's just say 100 down to 70. So you almost went down, what, 30% rough. Right, right? I mean, it, you, you basically just subtracted, say, 1.0, 100% down to 0.7 or uh, 70%, okay? So the risk went down. Now, if that number was like 1.5 or 2.0, then it would have actually went up. The risk would have went up, but it's less than one, okay? Now, it's important that this confidence interval not do what? You wanna make sure that this confidence interval never has never includes the number 1.0, okay? Like for example, if it said 0 0.60 through 1.2, then I don't like that because 1.0 was included in there, right? It's, it's in between 0.6 and 1.2. And that, and that means that this study at some point was equal and that would make a bogus study, no good numbers. So the fact that it doesn't cross one is perfect. So what does this mean? Is it A, Using guided meditation is associated with a 30% increase in risk in postpartum depression? Well, no, it's not an increase because we said it's going the other direction, so it's definitely not him. Guided meditation decreases the risk of postpartum depression by 70%. Um, well, we agree that it goes down, but it sure wasn't by 70%. You know, it went from 1.0 to 0.7. The risk of postpartum depression is reduced by 30% when guided meditation is used prior to delivery. Okay, I kind of like that one. The risk of postpartum depression is, is in the guided meditation group is 0.7%. Well, that's 0.7% you know, is actually 0 0.007, okay? No, it's 0.7. So the only answer on this one is gonna be C, that the risk is reduced by 30%. And again, it went from 1.0 down to 0.7. And again, go back and think about it. If, the, if, it was the, if the risk was 1.0, it's equal risk, whether you did the treatment or didn't. That's why we do not like one in any of our confidence intervals. So, so the fact that it's down at 0.7, it's a lower risk. By how much? We're just kind of subtracted essentially, and it would be 30% down, answer choice C. Okay? So this question says, uh, which of the following statements most accurately represents the comparison of drug A and drug B in this setting? 
Researchers at a state psychiatric facility are, are comparing uh, two new novel medications, drug A and drug B, for the treatment for treatment resistant schizophrenia. A total of 200 patients were enrolled in the study. Outcome measures of each patient were conducted every two weeks over the course of the six week trial. Outcome measures were recorded using the positive and negative symptom scale. Results show that the relative rate of reduction of symptoms in drug A compared to drug B was 0.90, with a 95% confidence interval of 0.65 to 1.15. The two drugs had similar comparison in the PANS, which was that positive and negative syndrome scale, at the six week mark. Which of the following statements most accurately represents the comparison of drug A and drug B in this setting? All right, so we had two drugs, they compared them, they want to know, do you understand what this information right here says? The 0.9 with a 95% confidence interval between 0.65 and 1.15. So right there, what does that tell you? Tell you the data is no good. We don't like it. Why? Because what's included between 0.65 and 1.15? The number 1.0. So at some point, when they compared drug A and drug B, there was no difference. It was equal, okay? So despite this saying 0.9, the fact that the confidence interval actually has one included, meaning there is no difference. So is it A, drug A is superior to drug B? Nope. Is it drug B is superior to drug A? Nope, not gonna do that one. Is it C, neither drug is superior? Okay, maybe. Or is it D, unable to determine based on the current information? Well, not only can we lean towards C, the next sentence actually says the two drugs had similar comparison with PANS at the six week mark. So even at the end of the study, there was, there was no difference between the two when they did the um, PANS, which is basically the measure between the positive and negative symptoms scale for schizophrenia. So it's not that one, we have enough information. The correct answer in this is gonna be C, neither drug is superior. The learning point from this is make sure that your confidence intervals, if you ever see this on the drug ads or any other questions, if the confidence interval contains one, I want you to say it's no good, okay? Stick with that and you'll do just fine on the exam. Hope it helps, guys.